Greetings, it is I, the Great One Himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-S-C.com on the interwebs. I'm sitting here, like, mentally preparing my show notes for this, and it's like, why don't I just turn on the fucking recorder? It just fascinates me. It doesn't surprise me anymore. I've gone past surprise, and I'm at the point of fascination. It fascinates me how fucking stupid you people are. How stupid and self-centered and just unaware of anything other than the hallucinations that you create in your mind. I'm going to talk about some responses I've gotten on various places on interwebs. YouTube, which on YouTube, I think, if I'm reading this correctly, I'm up to 120 subscribers on YouTube. It's pretty good, considering I put zero effort into the YouTube channel. So thank you to the 120 of you out there. Subscribe to this. Now if you just listen to this shit and post some intelligent comments as opposed to the stupid comments that I'm going to be talking about. It amazes me. Oddly enough, this is all going to come back to femistatism. I know, it's like every fucking episode of Stating the Obvious in Anarchy Moment here lately has been about femistatism. And I find that as interesting as you do because I certainly do not... Well, I know you, for those of you who are femistatists, you think I hate women and all this other shit, and it doesn't really matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you think. The Rock says this, right? Actually, I did my rock imitation in an expensive restaurant last week while I was out with a hot girl. I'm surprised I didn't get thrown out because I was sitting in the restaurant going, The Rock says this, jabroni. You want to bring it? You want to bring it to SmackDown? You want The Rock to smack you around? Anyway, so I was doing my rock imitation in the restaurant. It was so fucking loud in there, nobody could actually hear me except her. So anyhow, I love women. That's why I don't want women to be stupid, which is why you try to educate them. Now, of course, most women are statist, and I hate all statist, regardless of gender, color, whatever. Anyway, how about, um, let's see if I can fucking focus, because I have shit to do. Unlike those of you who don't fucking do anything with your lives, except wait for welfare checks, I should show up. All right, let me just, let me just throw this out. We'll come back to this, but I want to say it while I'm thinking about it. As I'm sitting here, and listening to all of this whining from the fucking femistatist about men. You know, oh, men are rapist. Oh, men are terrible. Oh, men are blah, blah, blah. You know, and I, I say my shtick, and we'll say it again later, and you've heard it before, and you'll hear it more in the future. All, right, all of these men, they, they have mothers. If all of these men are, you know, if all men are rapist and all men are sexist and all men are this and all men are that, well, they had mothers. How do you fucking whore ass fucking cunts out there not understand? It's like it's this, it's this the example Stefan Molyneux always uses. If a person goes out, let's say it's an evil man, he hates women and he hates black people and he's a Republican and he's evil and he's mean and oh, oh, and he doesn't believe in global warming. Oh, he's so evil. He's terrible. So this evil, terrible man, he goes out and he, buy, he gets a dog as a puppy and he takes the little puppy home and he beats the puppy all the time with a stick and he starves the puppy and he kicks the puppy around. And he does this, like five years later, this dog has grown up and it's mean and it's vicious and it's hateful and it's hungry. And one day the dog gets out of the house and runs out on the street and sees a small child and runs over and jumps on the small child and kills him. Is it because the dog is broken? The dog is bad? The dog is inherently evil? No. It's because of the way the dog was raised. It was because of the environment in which the dog was brought up. And then when a man goes out and rapes women, does anybody say, huh, I wonder what kind of environment he was brought up in. I wonder if his mother might have contributed to this behavior. Because no, of course not. We can't do that. 
because why women are, what have we said a thousand times? Men are agents, women are objects. Women have no moral responsibility. They, they don't, you don't, you know it's true. If you're a fucking cunt, and I know you hate being called a cunt, that's why I'm calling you a cunt, because it's pissing you off. Notice how I'm controlling your emotional response by saying the word cunt. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I, you are, could be anywhere on the planet Earth. It could be any time. By saying the word cunt, I take complete control of your emotional response. You are an object. You cannot control yourself. I own you by simply saying the word cunt. I can manipulate you in any way that I want. You're fucking stupid. And you women claim this greatness, yet you can't even take responsibility for your own children. Oh, well, all men are broken. That's why he was a rapist. It had nothing to do with his mother. He's a rapist because men are broken. Isn't that interesting? Out of all the animals on the planet Earth, it's only in the human species that all the men are broken. Somehow or another, all the male animals in every other species on the planet seem to function relatively okay. Of course, some of the primates also engage in rape. We know that dolphins also engage in rape. So if we're going, you know, and because people love to use the animal argument, well, humans are just animals. Okay, well, in that case, if we're going to go that route and say that humans are just animals, well, considering that primates and dolphins rape, then there really shouldn't be a problem with humans raping. Oh, but there is. Why is that? Because yes, biologically we are animals, but we are also moral agents. It's also interesting that it's only statist, because I more and more and more and more and more need a drink of coffee, hang on, believe that we have moved past Homo sapiens sapiens, and we are now diverging into two different species, Homo sapiens statist and Homo sapien anarchist. And Homo sapiens statist is the only species on the planet that is too stupid to know what is and isn't food, right? Homo sapiens statist needs the government to provide them with a food pyramid or whatever it is these days. I think it's a circle now because, you know, the pyramid was too confusing because it had three corners or something. Who knows? But, but I mean, you who are statist, you need like guidance from the government so you know what to eat. You need people to tell you that a Big Mac is not healthy. Do you realize you're the only fucking animals on the planet Earth who are too stupid to know what is and is not food. Dolphins, chimpanzees, dogs, cats, chickens, horses, lizards, frogs, fireflies, mosquitoes, amoebas, all of those animals can figure out what is and isn't food without Obama to explain it to them. But you're so fucking dumb. You don't know what is and isn't food unless the government tells you. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about how the state circumvents natural selection and evolution. If you're too fucking dumb to know what is and isn't food, you either eat something you shouldn't and die, or you don't eat what you're supposed to and you die and your DNA gets the fuck out of the gene pool. And then we don't have to listen to you complaining about overpopulation. Oh yeah, overpopulation. I got a book here that I'm going to be talking about in the near future. It's like, you know, 400 pages of overpopulation. Overpopulate. Yet I notice you fucking upper middle class white people keep spitting out babies. Overpopulation. You know, if we had a little less state and a little more natural selection, there wouldn't be as many children, would there? You know why the earth is overpopulated? It's not because of Ronald Reagan. It's not because of anarcho-capitalism. The, the planet Earth is quote-unquote overpopulated 
because of statism, because it's the state that keeps you people alive and reproducing because democracy, because we need as many stupid people as can be available to vote in order to create the illusion that democracy works. All right, now I'm going way off track, so let me fucking focus back in and get this done and move on. Comments. Comments, comments, comments. There will be comments. So this one happened over here. This is on the tube of use. This was on Anarchy Moment number 20. Statists cannot grasp history or context is the title of that one. The other thing I love about the comments is... Over here on the sidebar where they show the related videos, there's a related video which is titled Anarchy, Awesome Speech. And the little thumbnail shows some hot chick with a lot of cleavage bending over showing it to the camera. I'm like, yes, that's one way to get people to listen to your video or look at your video, whichever. All right, has nothing to do. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, yes. I can always tell it's really fucking obvious. And this is, so all right, why do I not ever respond to the haters on the social media? The reason is because first of all, I'm, I don't have time to get in arguments with haters on social media. The second reason is I don't care. The third reason is that these people are just looking for attention and it's not my place to give them attention. And the fourth reason is that it's obvious these people don't actually listen to the podcast they simply read the comments, the show notes, whatever I've written below it, and whatever they're saying is based upon that. It's really obvious. And as those of you who do actually listen to these know, a lot of times the show notes have, the, you know, the, the degree to which the show notes under the episode relate to the episode varies. And of course, the show notes are also written to suck people in and get them to listen. So sometimes, like in the show note, I might say, you know, let's go out and kill everybody. But that's not what I'm saying anywhere in the episode. I'm writing that in order to get people to read it and go, oh, what the fuck is this guy talking about? And then listen to it. It's called, what is it? I mean, it's called marketing hype. It's called manipulation. I write shit in the show notes specifically to manipulate people into listening to the episode. Intelligent people would recognize that. Anyway, focus. The show notes for this episode read as follows. Status seem to think there is no history in the cosmos. For example, a person who is a murderer, according to a statist, simply pops into existence from nowhere. They don't seem to click to the fact that he has a mother, went to public school, <clears throat> probably has years of college, and is a, and is a result of our feminine-dominated society. I shouldn't be calling it feminine-dominated society, because feminine is... If you're feminine, that's good. If you're a woman, I should say our feminized society. But then again, it's the show notes, and I don't care. So this idiot, P3.me, wrote the following. You're suggesting that murder is caused by the public school system, which is younger than the practice of murder. Also, talking about evidence, do you have any? Where do you come to the conclusion that public school systems cause murderous behavior? Okay. And by, I followed, I went over to check out his page. It's a bunch of video gaming stuff. So this is a fat guy who lives in his mom's basement and plays video games. Wait, is that this guy or is that the other guy? Hang on. Let me do this real quick. Yes, this is the video game nerd. So anyway, this guy plays video games in his mommy's basement. So that's what we're dealing with. I'm suggesting murder is caused by the school system, which is younger than the practice of murder. Okay, that's brilliant. So school can't have anything to do with murder because murder happened before school. So Nazis can't have anything to do with murder because murder existed before Nazis. White people in the South have nothing to do with slavery because slavery existed before white people in the South. 
No, dumb fuck. I'm not saying that going to public school causes you to be a murderer, but I am saying that going to public school is part of the environment in which people are raised, just like the mad dog that we talked about. Again, when somebody's a murderer, how is it... See, why is this so fucking complicated? Everybody wants to say, well, it takes a village to raise a child and parenting is important and learning is important and the child's environment is important. And then yet when children turn into murderers, everybody wants to pretend that the environment had nothing to do with that. Why? They're just murderers. They just came out of the womb as murderers. No, I have a newsflash for you. Now, are there some people who come out of the womb probably broken, damaged, so forth and so on? Sure. Then again, how these people get through public school with nobody notice? This is another thing Stefan Molyneux talks about on a pretty regular basis. There And there are. There are sociopaths in our society. The problem is that we don't identify them and ostracize them or tag them or punish them. Instead, we vote for them. We give them elected office. I mean, look at George Bush. Look at Hussein Obama. Look at Bill Clinton. Look at Hillary Clinton. Look at uh, Chris Christie. I mean, these, look at, uh, what's his name? Damn it. Dick Cheney. I mean, these people are all sociopaths. It's obvious. You just look at these people. And it's dripping, and what? But you statist because you are natural slaves. You worship these people. You see these people as being superior to you because you're a natural slave, and everybody's superior to you. But for whatever reason, you look at these people, and you, you because you need someone to control your life for you, and because, as I have famously said, a statist is someone who hates your freedom so much. She will give up her own freedom to take away yours because you statists so desperately want other people to have their freedom taken away from them. You will elect these sociopaths to high office. So no, murder by, is not caused by public schools. Public schools are part of the environment that help shape murderers. Had you listened to the fucking podcast, and if you had a brain, you might understand that. If you perhaps played fewer video games. Evidence. Yeah, I have evidence. I have the fucking evidence that everybody who is a fucking murderer has a mother. Yes, I have fucking evidence of that. I sure fucking do. Do I have evidence that everybody who is a murderer went to public school? Yes, I sure do. Because they did. Find me a fucking murderer that didn't go to public school. There's a couple of them out there, I'm sure, who went to private schools. They all went to public school. I mean, this is the stupidest shit. This is why I don't respond to these things. Like, how do you respond to something this stupid? Where do you come to the conclusion that public school systems cause murderous behavior? Well, I did a fucking podcast where I talked about it. I don't know. What the fuck did I say? Did you listen to it? No, of course not. Where do I come? I come to the conclusion right here in the fucking recording studio of the Cynical Libertarian Society. That's where I come to the fucking conclusion. I come to the conclusion that the public school system is part of the environment from which people who murder other people emerge. I know this is really complicated because public schools are controlled by women and we know that women are not moral agents. They're just objects. And we know that all these murderers had mothers. And why the mothers couldn't possibly teach them that killing people is wrong? Why, fuck no. Of course not. That's, that's patriarchy. Expecting a mother to teach her children that killing people is wrong? Oh, that is patriarchy. That, you, I obviously hate women. Let's move on to the next one because I have shit to do. Over here, this is on Google+, Plus, which is a giant fucking joke, but I just auto-post shit to Google+. Plus. If you're commenting on Google+, Plus, you should. Exp there's even less of a chance you're going to get a response because I don't log into Google+. Plus. 
So if, if you want to get in touch with me, either email me directly, god at cynlabsse.com, or comment on the YouTube, because I, when I check in on YouTube, I'll respond to comments on there and stuff like that, or leave a comment on the website at cynlabsse.com. I will respond to comments on the website, and I'll respond to comments on YouTube eventually, when I get around to it. Comments on Google+, Plus, unless you're a hot babe, you're not going to get a response. This idiot. Hold on, let me open. Let me first of all, let me close this shit. I have all these tabs open now. Uh huh. Let's see. Also, just since I'm here, I still find it fascinating that the stating the obvious episode with the most views is stating the obvious number 122, 1,084 views. And the title of it is The State in Your Uterus. It just goes to show all you have to do is put the word uterus in the title of a video and it gets views. I should just put uterus in everything. All right, that can go away. Don't need that. What is this? Do I need this? Yep. This is an idiot. All right. I posted... Anarchy Moment 84, the hashtag Yes All Women Are Controlled by the Patriarchy episode. And this, oh, I was checking this idiot out. Oh my god, what a fucking wannabe. I'm looking at this guy's Google Plus feed. He looks like a idiot. Oh, look at this. I joined this community a couple of days ago. Now, this is Zinferno is saying this. This is his comment. I joined this community a couple of days ago, and it's starting to seem like a mistake. A large part of why I became a libertarian was that it seemed like the most reasonable philosophy with the most reasonable following. Since joining, I've read an enormous amount of name-calling, calls for armed violence, and a general disproportioning of the who, what is to blame for the shutdown. Maybe this activity isn't the norm, or maybe I'm in the wrong place. Wah, wah. Wah, 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 name calling and they're calling me names. I can't take it. You see, Zinferno, he's very sensitive. What is this? All right, anyway, let me stop looking at Zinferno's crap. Oh, wait, hold on. Potentially hot chick. All right, hang on. Hang on. Zinferno has a YouTube. Let's go over to... He has no videos, so he's not doing anything. And... I Sorry, I'm boring the shit out of you guys because I'm going down rabbit holes while I'm recording. I really apologize for this. I'm just trying to get a beat on what kind of idiot this idiot is. All right, anyway, here we go. His comment was, quote, I couldn't finish reading this as it was much too painful. Please stop portraying this as libertarian. Now, this is why I don't respond to people on social media. You don't read a podcast, you listen to it. He's telling me he hasn't actually listened to the podcast. So he has no fucking... This is like people... Well, you know, I'm not going to read Origin of Species by Darwin because it's, it's anti-Christian. How the fuck do you know that? Have you read it? You have no fucking idea what's in the book. And what's funny is people who... Well, people who haven't read it on both sides, the evolution supporters, they also think they know it's in the book and they haven't read it. You haven't even listened to the podcast. But you're telling me to stop portraying this, whatever this is, as libertarian. Why? Because it hurts your little fucking feelings? 
I have an idea. Why don't you go fuck yourself? I can portray whatever I want as whatever I want. It's called freedom of speech. It's called thinking. Again, as I've said before, I have almost 10 fucking years of podcasting. I have been doing this. When some fucker shows up who does, knows nothing about the methodology of my thinking, about the theses that I have put forward, about my reasoning, also some fucker just shows up out of the blue and leaves some comment like, I couldn't finish reading this. I have going on 200 fucking episodes of stating the obvious. You haven't listened to a single fucking one of them and you're telling me not to portray myself as libertarian because it was too painful for you. Because it hurt your little fucking feelings. Before you start trying to fucking argue with me about who I am and what I am, I better see some fucking evidence that you've put some effort into it. Over on the tube of views, I've got about three people who comment on my stuff on a regular basis. And sometimes they disagree with me. But you know what? See, I know that they're listening to the episodes. I know that they're digesting what I'm thinking. And so when they say, hey, I disagree with you about something, I pay attention. I look at it and go, hmm, all right, I, I better take a few days. I mean, initially, listen, this is the brilliance of being me, is that I can be completely fucking honest. Initially, when one of my regular listeners disagrees with me about something, you know, I say, man, fuck you, you're stupid. You know what the fuck you're talking about? Because that's natural reaction. And then I calm down and I think about it and it's like, okay, well, this is his perspective and... Let me think about that. I take, I think about it for days sometimes. Like when one of my regular people disagrees with me, I think about it for days, mulling it over and trying to. All right, well, what's his point? All right, so what's my point? And is he right? You know, and really working this shit in my head because my desire is to be right. And by being right, I don't mean right the way most of you are. Like if you believe in global warming, you want to be right. So any evidence that says there is no global warming, you ignore that evidence and you only see the evidence for global warming, right? Those most of you want to be right by taking the opinions and the world views you already have and the world view you've had since you were 8 years old and trying to force the universe to conform to it. I desire to be right by looking at actual evidence and thinking, again, evidence. Has every person who is a murderer, do they all have a mother? Let's look at empirical evidence. Can you find a person who is a murderer who didn't have a mother? Everyone who is a murderer, not everyone, most people who are murderers went to public school. Let's look at some empirical evidence. Let's get some people who are murderers. Let's pull out their case files. Did they go to public school? They sure fucking did. Evidence says that almost everyone who is a murderer went to public school and had a mother. If mothers are such great parents, and if public school is such a fantastic environment controlled by women who teach people so much, then why are they coming out as murderers? Because men are broken. Oh, men are broken. You mean they're like they just they're born broken? Well, where did men born from? They born from uteruses. They born from women. And we're back to the God thing. Well, humans are created with original sin, but God is all powerful. Well, if God's so fucking awesome, take out the original sin. If you're not going to take out the original sin, shut the fuck up. Okay? If men are broken and men come out of women, hey, instead of allowing the women who make broken men to keep reproducing, let's allow some natural selection to take place. We well, can't do that. No, no. Can't do that. No. Uh uh. So, when some fucking moron 
like Zinferno shows up and whining about, oh, it's too painful for me to read. It's just the fucking show notes. He, you didn't even listen to the fucking podcast. And you want to tell me to stop portraying myself as libertarian? Tell you what, Zinferno, why don't you stop portraying yourself as anything other than a fucking moron? Why don't you crawl back under your goddamn rock and go fuck yourself? I have no time for your shit. I have no time for your whiny little feelings. Oh, my feelings! Fucking moron. And this, this is all coming in. And people are calling names. Oh my God, I was just so fucking sick of people who are like, you're, you're calling people names. You, know, you ever, I've talked about this before. You always tell people who hate name calling and labeling only hate the name calling and labeling when it's directed at them. You'll notice these people never mind name calling and labeling when it's directed to other people. All right, I got to move on from this idiot because I got shit to do. Have I mentioned that I have shit to do? We are moving on. The next one. This happened in the Twitter space. Where's Where the hell is my Twitter space? God damn it. Twitter space. Here we go. So I sent out on the Twitter space, which episode was this that went out? So it was Anarchy Moment, 84. No, was it? wait, was it? God damn it. Hang on. I know, I know, I know. Yes, it was the same one. It was the Anarchy Moment, 84. They were just talking about hashtag, yes, all women are controlled by the patriarchy. You know, if you want to troll on Twitter, there is no better trolling than to troll on the hashtag yes all, yes all women. They, oh my god, it is the easiest trolling on the fucking planet. Every time I do a yes all women post, I get somebody responding. All right, Eliza Devine wrote back to me in the Twitter space, Women aren't allowed to belong to themselves, and yet you want to treat women like enemies. Yes. And no. I do not want to treat women like enemies. I want to treat femistatist like enemies, because femistatist are the enemy. The reason women are not allowed to belong to themselves is because women belong to the state. Why do women belong to the state? Because number one, women consent to belong to the state. Because number two, women support the state. Because number three, the state does exist. The reason femistatists don't own themselves is because they want to be owned by the state, because they want to be slaves, because they want welfare, they want WIC, they want the government to take money away from men and give it to them, they want free birth control. Yes, Femistatists are the enemy, and femistatists are too fucking stupid to know that the reason they don't own their own bodies is because they keep voting for Obama. Or Romney. It doesn't matter who you vote for. You're a fucking femistatist. You're a statist. You keep asking the government for permission. You're the ones going to the government. Can we have permission to get married? Yes, femistatists are the enemy. And the reason they aren't allowed to belong to themselves is because they don't want to belong to themselves. Because, as I have said, a statist 
is someone who hates your freedom so much she will give up her own freedom to take yours away. That is the statist. That is the femistatist. Women can belong to themselves anytime they want. All they have to do is reject the state. But they're not going to reject the state because the state gives them too many benefits. It gives them free health care. It gives them free fucking titty care. It gives them free birth control. It gives them welfare, WIC, food stamps. It gives them a judicial system that's biased in their favor. It gives them a justice system in which when you look at people who have actually been convicted of a crime, 13 black men go to prison for every one woman who goes to prison. It, the state gives them, what do you call it, a, affirmative action and gender shit and all this. Stuff. I mean, they're getting all of this. So you can belong to yourself anytime you want, but you have to give up all of these privileges. And we all know you're not going to do that. Then, Miss Divine, I'm Eliza Divine. I'm so divine tweets to me, as long as you consistently badmouth women who escape control and their contributions, we won't have nice things like autonomy. I'm not badmouthing any women who escape control because I don't know any women who have escaped control. Not, I, I really don't even know what the fuck she's talking about with this one. I don't know any women who have escaped control of the state. No idea what the fuck she's talking about. And their contributions. Well, again, women don't contribute because... And yes, there are a few women who have contributed. But for the most part, again, women are objects, right? When women raise men who are rapists, it has nothing to do with their parenting skills. No, no. It's because the men are broken. Women are objects. Women cannot change the environment around them. They can't do anything. They just sit there like a fucking rock. I, I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Bad mouth women who escape control. I don't know any women who have escaped control. I have no fucking clue what the hell you're talking about, honey. Absolutely none. Let's take a look at Eliza Devine's Twitter feed. Shockingly enough, every fucking tweet has the hashtag yes all women in it. The Yes All Women Daily is out. Oh my God. Sad about the need to keep re-itinerating Yes All Women, but prepared to do so until the message gets through. Man, we are going to tweet until the fucking message gets out there. Holy shit. Just heard a woman fat shaming her teenage daughter. I had to say something, but wish I would have said it better. Really? So there's a woman fat shaming her teenage daughter. First of all, I applaud you for fat shaming fat people. We need more of that. Second of all, here we go. This, allow me, for those of you going, why is he going to read this woman's Twitter feed? Because this woman's Twitter feed, I use the term woman loosely, this femistatist, twim, fit, pia, pia, Ah, this. <laughs> this femistatist's Twitter feed is the proof, the evidence, the support for every thesis I've been making. Okay, just heard a woman fat shaming her teenage daughter. If you're a woman and you have a daughter and your daughter is fat, whose fucking fault is this? Again, do you see how women will not take responsibility? Just like with the dog, you get a puppy, you beat the puppy, you starve it. 15 years later, the dog runs out of the house and kills somebody. Whose fault is that, the dog or the person who raised the dog? So you have a baby. The baby comes out. You raise the baby. Fifteen years later, the baby is fat. 
Whose fault is that? Where's the fucking parenting? You fucking femistatists, you think you're such great parents. Why are your children fat? Why are your children stupid? Why are your children on medication for their personalities? Why do your children rape other people? Why do your children murder? This fat teenage girl, gone to public school. Public school, did she learn anything about nutrition? Did she learn anything about eating healthy? Did she learn anything about exercise? No, of course not. But why public school can't possibly have anything to do with people being fat? No, no, of course not, no. God damn it, you fucking people are so fucking stupid and you wanna come and you fucking send me your stupid little comments on Twitter. You're so fucking stupid. We have to make this world a safe place for women. But first, we have to teach men to control themselves and respect women. Hashtag, yes, all women. Whoa. You, cause see, men just can't control themselves. They're just out of control. Okay. Well then start fucking teaching. You have control of men's lives for the first 18 years of their lives between being their mothers and controlling the public school system. Start fucking teaching. Oh, but that's right. You can't. You, you, you can't. Because you're objects, not agents. Women sharing their stories about what guys do isn't feminism. It's a reality check. Oh. Every day I see new women share their experiences here. I'm glad they know they are not alone. Oh. We're not tearing men down. We're telling them not to tear us down anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're really, because we're, you know, because the whole thing where we don't allow you to raise money for breast cancer awareness and shit, and the whole thing where we won't allow you to register for the selective service, and the whole thing where we don't allow you to do the really dangerous jobs very often, you know, and the whole thing where we allow you to get free abortions and free birth control. And yeah, I mean, we're really fucking holding you goddamn whores down. I just don't understand how women can even function. I mean, fuck. It's just the, the burden of getting all of that alimony and welfare and WIC and child support and food stamps and free birth control and being exempt from selective service and being able to get away with crimes and being able to go to professional work environments dressed like whores instead of dressing in three-piece suits with ties around your necks. God damn it, you are so fucking oppressed. Hashtag yes all women because a 14 year old girl should be able to ride a bike without men driving next to her to grab her breast and laugh. Again, okay, so these men drove next to her, grabbed her breast and laughed at her. Where are these men's mothers at? Oh, that's right. You, you, you can't be a parent because you're an object. Where are these men's mothers? These men went to public school. No time in public school did anybody suggest to them that, you know, grabbing a 14-year-old girl's tits and laughing at her isn't really a nice way to behave towards other people. Nobody mentioned it. Not, not a single fucking woman, not a single fucking stupid feminist cunt mentioned to these men any time while they were growing up that it was uncool to grab 14-year-old girl's titties and laugh at them. 
and you femistatists, you wonder why I make fun of you. Because on one hand, you think you're the center of the fucking universe, and on the other hand, everything you say is, is an admission that you are absolutely powerless and incompetent. You are incompetent as parents. You are incompetent as voters. No, you, we, we don't own ourselves. Well, yeah, because you keep voting for the fucking government. You keep giving the government more powerful. Of course you don't own yourself, you stupid cunt. When you stop fucking sucking at the government tit, then you can start to own yourself. Hashtag yes all women because I'm alive because my mother taught me how to spot a predator and I've encountered, avoided, got away from hundreds. Hundreds of predators. Did any of these predators have mothers? Did their mothers not think to raise them to not be predators? Do these predators go to public school? An indoctrination system controlled almost exclusively by women. While they were in school, did any of the female teachers mention? Yeah, I mean, we can go on and on. It's just, I'm just going to repeat myself over and over and over. You fucking femistatist cunts are incompetent and powerless. And you can change this anytime you want. You just have to make the transition from being an object to an agent. And it starts, God, I hate to sound like fucking Stefan Molyneux here, it starts with parenting. If your child grows up to be a predator, that has something to do with your parenting. If your child grows up to be a rapist, you might want to look at your parenting. If your child grows up to be a murderer, you might want to look at your parenting.